let's learn how to make something in our program repeat as many times as we want it to, tens of times, hundreds of times, even millions of times if we want, using what's called a while loop statement. In this video, we're gonna take a look at one of the computational superpowers, the ability to write loops that give us the ability to write algorithms, which are a fixed sequence number of steps that can process an arbitrary amount of input or carry out an arbitrary number of uh, instructions. And so loops are going to give us the ability to continue to move through some segment of our code, some block of statements over and over and over again until we want the program to stop doing that and then continue on further. Uh, so let's take a look at how this is conceptually going to be laid out in our program. So what's the purpose? The purpose is we'd like to uh, be able to control repetition in our program. Control, repetition, oops, repetition of uh, statements in our programs. All right, so again, we're talking about another control flow statement. We have just looked at the if else control flow statement and the while loop is gonna have some things in common, but will be very, very different as well, okay? So in the while loop, we're gonna come in and once again, we are going to test something, okay? So there's gonna be this condition. And the condition is a question, right? And the question that we're asking is enter the loop or enter the repeat block. So enter, I'm just gonna call it the enter the loop here. Uh, so enter loop is the question. And again, this is gonna be a Boolean condition, has to be either true or false. And if that condition is true, right, what's going to happen is control is going to go into the repeat block, right? So the repeat block is a lot like the, oops, uh, the then block of an if then statement but in a loop, we're gonna call this the repeat block to be sure that we don't confuse the two uh, because the repeat block does have a very different uh, set of semantics than the then block, which we'll see in just a second, all right? If that condition was false, what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip right on past that repeat block and continue on in our program, all right? So if this loop condition is true, if we're not done looping yet, we're going to go into the repeat block and then here's where things get fascinating, right? So if this were a then block, right? You would have expected, oh yeah, it's gonna go down and it's gonna just keep doing what it was doing. But no, 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 this is a loop, right? And it's gotta get its name from somewhere. So what is the name loop? Where does this come from? Well, after the repeat block finishes, after the last statement in the repeat block, we're gonna go right on back up and test that condition again. Do we still wanna keep looping? Do we wanna go into the repeat block? Yes or no? And if the answer is no, okay, we'll continue on in our code. But if the answer is yes, we go back into the repeat block and we come back, we do whatever those statements are, we come back around, we test again. And this is where the idea of why this is called a loop comes from, right? We can continue doing this as many times as we want and we're gonna have the control in our programs to say inside of the repeat block, change something such that this condition ultimately becomes false and we stop looping, okay? This is still very abstract. So let's go uh, try uh, a simple example in code, okay? So I'm gonna set up a new uh, lesson uh, or a Python file in my lessons directory and I'm going to name it um, while underscore or while.py. And actually, let's um, let's rename this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I would encourage you to call yours um, while loop while dash loop .py. just so we don't accidentally confuse us with the while statement on its own. And let's add our doc string. The doc string is an example of a while loop statement. Okay. So what do we want our loop to do? Let's just start with something simple. Let's have it print. Um, say all the numbers between um, zero and uh, nine, right? So all of the single digit numbers in uh, the, the base 10 decimal system. 
So I'm going to set up a variable named counter, right? And counter will be an integer, and it will initially be uh, zero, okay? And what we're going to do is we want to write a loop, a while loop that says while that counter is less than, um, say, 10. So that would be true if we start from zero for all the digits, zero through nine. So while counter is less than 10, what we're going to do is we're going to print the counter. And then this is in the repeat block and I'll annotate this in just a moment. And then we're going to increase that counter by one. Okay, so counter is going to take counters currently very uh, current value and add one to it. Okay, and then we're going to be done. And then we're going to print done. Okay, great. So if I try running this program, Python module lessons dot while loop. Uh, and I make my terminal a little bit larger here, what we would see if I scroll up as well. Hey, look at that. Our program printed from zero to nine, all in one go. Notice that took only three lines of code or four if we count that uh, variable initialization. Okay, well, what if we wanted to make it possible for the user to control how many uh, times this loop evaluated? And that has a special term, how many times the loop runs. We might also say it's how many time, times the loop iterates. And iteration is a special word we'll, we'll come back to. Um, but uh, let's say, okay, um, let's say the uh, uh, maximum uh, is going to be an integer. That is, we're going to ask the user for input, uh, uh, count up to, but not including, what, right? And again, this input function evaluates to a uh, string. We want an integer, so we need to convert that string to an integer. So I'm going to uh, call the int function and give it as an input, the input the user gives us. And now instead of saying, well, counter is less than 10, we're gonna say, well, counter is less than maximum, right? So what if we wanted to make our program a little bit more interesting and, um, print uh, some message associated with this. Well, uh, one of the things we could do is we could print or do some computation, right? Like let's calculate the square of, uh, of, of each of these, these values. So we could print uh, the uh, square of and then concatenate a string representation of our counter variable is and then concatenate uh, a string representation of and let's make this a little bit more interesting what do we want this to be well we want this to be a variable that we had set up previously so let's go ahead and declare a variable inside of this while loop that says um, um, counter squared and that's going to be an integer is assigned counter squared raised to the power of two, right? And so now we're gonna give the string representation of counter squared, All right? So I just added quite a lot of code here. Let me slow down for a second and uh, talk a little bit about what we've got going on. Let me clear these annotations from before and let's break this down a little bit, okay? So this while loop, has a condition, right? And if that condition is true, if the counter is less than the maximum, and counter is initially zero, so as long as we enter some number greater than zero as our maximum, then we will go into this loop. And inside of that loop, we see our repeat block, right? And so all of these lines are part of our loops repeat block. And notice, just like with an if statement where we had then and else blocks, each line in this is indented by one level. That's great. And uh, then what we can do is write statements like we would write anywhere else. So we set up a variable as that's inside of this loop. And that variable's value is going to be take the current value of our counter, which starts at zero. But of course, as this program runs, we just saw it, it went zero, one, two, three, 
all on up until we reach some maximum. And then we print some message. The square of this string, uh, or of this, this integer counter, which we convert to a string, is going to be, and then we uh, substitute in using concatenation the value of this counter squared variable. So we, that's previously had calculated the square. And then on this last line of the uh, repeat block, and so let me just highlight this one more time. This is our repeat block. So everything in here is part of the repeat block. We increase our counter and then we come back up and we go and we test one more time. Is counter still less than maximum? And so notice that we are changing that counter variable and we'll see that that's important and I'll come back to talk a little bit about that in just a moment. <clears throat> okay, so let's try running this program again. So uh, I'm going to give myself a little bit more space here so that we can see these evaluations. And Python module lessons dot while loop. Okay, count up to but not including what and let me just choose a simple number here like say four. So this will be zero, one, two, three. And Oh, look at this, I made a mistake that you may have made. And it's a common one. It looks like nothing's changed in our program, but I know something's changed. What did I do? Well, I forgot to save my file. And if I had looked at my file, we would see that, uh, that white circle. So let me put my uh, focus back in my text editor and save this. Control S on Windows, Command S on Mac. So notice that white circle's gone. I've saved my work. And I run this program again, count up to but not including what, try four again. And there we go. Look, the square of zero is zero, the square of one is one, the square of two is four, the square of three is nine. That's pretty cool. Uh, well, what if we wanted to calculate the squares of everything up to say 1000? And I want to, before I do this, I want to emphasize to you, if I asked you to, hey, go write down for every number between zero and 999 inclusive, go write down the squares of all of those. Like, just take a minute to do that. How long would it take? It would take you a lot longer than the computer. Like, we just ran this and boom, it's already done, right? And it's not going to make any mistakes. It's going to be very precise and it's very fast. And notice that we didn't have to change anything in our program, right? So this is an example of a very simple algorithm. It's a fixed number of steps that we can ask it to do more or less work on our behalf. And the algorithm is written such that, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I'm just a computer. I'm here to follow your instructions by the T, right? And if we wanted to do, to do a bigger number, what could we do? Well, we could do, uh, say, 10,000. You can increase it by another order of magnitude. And we can see that this is taking a little bit longer. Um, most of the time that is being spent for that program to run is actually time that's like taking it to get that information back out to your, your computer or your computer screen. Um, uh, so there are things we could do to, to make this run even faster. The point is just 10,000 times over, the computer just went out and carried some computation on our behalf. When have you ever been able to ask anything to do something 10,000 times and it very happily went off and did that, right? So this is really one of the fundamental superpowers of computing. We can express loops such that we can write algorithms that process arbitrary amounts of data on our behalf in a fixed amount of code. So our program doesn't have to change but the amount of work that it does, what it's working on, the different inputs can change and be decided later. And so that starts to be very, very powerful. All right, so what else do we wanna talk about here? Well, I wanna point out to you something that's very important. So you notice here that uh, this counter variable, counter is increasing by one each time because of line eight, right? So we increase that by one and then we go back up to the top and we test, hey, is the counter still less than the maximum number uh, that we asked? And, and that's yes, so we go into the repeat block and we keep doing this over and over and over. Well, what if I commented out this line? And what does it mean to comment out a line? Well, in Python, if we use this hash symbol, the program is going to ignore this line. And I'm gonna encourage you not to do this, not to try this, but if you want to, you can. And we'll look at what happens if, if this, this occurs. When you comment out a line, uh, a comment is ignored by the Python programming language. It's like, hey, this is a line that I want you to, everything after this hash symbol is gonna get ignored, all right? So we could have a comment here that is like say, uh, compute the square. 
And notice that because it's only what comes after the hash that gets ignored, the rest of this works just as like, like you would expect. But because we put this hash at the very beginning of this line, everything after the hash is getting ignored. And so this line isn't evaluated. And if you stop here and pause for a moment and think, well, what might happen if we run this program? Okay, well, let's think about it. We have a counter variable, it's zero. We ask for some maximum. Let's imagine that maximum was something very small, even just the number one, right? So we only want this loop to iterate one time. Is zero less than one? Yes, that's true. So computer's gonna go into the then block, right? We're gonna compute the square of zero, it's zero, right? So counter squared would be zero. We're gonna print the square of zero is zero. Nothing exciting there. And then because this line is ignored, which is the same as saying it's deleted for the purposes of, of this evaluation of the program, we're gonna go back up to the top and we're gonna test is counter less than maximum. Well, counter's still zero, we didn't change it, right? We didn't do anything to make our counter variable closer to the maximum. In other words, we didn't make any forward progress, which that's the other important notion of what iteration is. We're progressing towards some goal, step by step by step. Here, there's no progress being made. We're not getting any closer to this becoming false. And so we would do those same things over again. Counter squared is zero raised to the power of two because we didn't change counter. Counter is still zero. The square of zero is zero. All right, well, let's try running this program and see what happens. Up to what? And I'll just do the number one. And, and it looks like it works. And what happened? I'm like, oh my gosh, the, I made the same mistake again. I didn't save my file. Chris, get it together. All right, so count up to, but not including what? And I went I went back and I saved my file. Uh, okay, up to and not including what? One. And notice here that the computer is very happily printing as fast as it can, as many times as it can. At this point, hundreds of thousands of times, if I were to try and scroll up, I wouldn't even be able to scroll up far enough to see what came before this. It's just continuing to print the square of zero is zero. And you can't hear it by Ken. My computer's fans are starting to spin a little bit faster because it's working incredibly hard to do something incredibly stupid, right? Like this is insane. We don't want the program doing this, but what we love about our computers and our programs is they're gonna do exactly what we tell them to do, to the letter. And we told it to do this, right? We didn't, we never said change that counter variable to be one more than it was before. So it's continuing to, from now until the end of time or when I run out of electricity or whatever comes first, calculate the square of zero for us. This poor computer is doing a lot of hard work for, for not. And so this is what we call an infinite loop. Your computer's gonna keep doing this until you shut it down, or in this case, until we stop the process. And this trash symbol is useful for, for stopping the process. Uh, so if I kill this, my, my fans, which you can't hear, they just slowed down again. So oh, thank goodness, I, I was getting pretty tired calculating the square of zero millions of times over for you, sir. Uh, but okay, so what do we learn from that? Well, we learned that it's important to make progress towards your goal, right? This is, this ultimately needs to become false at some point. So we need to be sure that counter is increasing and what we had the first time was correct. So counter is assigned the current value of counter plus one. Okay, great. Now, uh, I'm gonna delete this other comment and we're just seeing some formatting issues there. Okay, uh, and so if I were to run this again, of course that, and, and I save my work this time, uh, be sure to save as you're changing your programs and rerunning them. Uh, and oops, uh, Python dash M lessons while loop. Okay, count up to, but not including what? One and boom, the square of zero is zero and then we're done. Okay, so we fixed the program by going back to where we were before. That was all to say it's possible to make infinite loops with while loops, you need to be very careful. So let's break down the syntax a little bit more specifically, right? So the syntax of a while loop starts out very similar to an if statement, right? Where we've got this keyword while, and then it's followed by some uh, condition, right? And just like with our, uh, if statements, this condition needs to be a Boolean expression. 
So far, we know that the Boolean expressions that we've come to know and love are ones that involve relational operators, such as is equal to, greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, not equal to. Those are the types of conditions we can write in uh, this in this point. Right? Uh, and then we have a colon. And what follows, one level of indentation, is the repeat block. And this repeat block, just like we've seen before, it's a block, so you can have many statements in it. We saw a repeat block with three statements in it in that last example, where we set up a new variable, we printed something, and then we increased uh, the value of our counter variable. Okay, so this is our repeat block. And uh, that's one level of indentation. So let's make a few notes about things that we need to be careful of here. So while is also a reserved word, and we tend to call these keywords in programming languages. And that means you can't use, you can't set up a variable named while. While is a special word that ha that only means this in the Python programming language, right? So uh, the repeat block is evaluated and I'm just going to shorthand that to evald if and only if uh, when the condition is evaluated to true. Okay, so when the uh, condition evaluates to true, so when our, our program reaches this point and the processor's like, oh, I found a while statement. First, it's going to test, is this condition true? And if that condition is true, then we're going to go into the repeat block. Otherwise, we're going to skip right over it, right? Uh, and what's important about the repeat block is after the last statement of the repeat block, control returns back to and you know what? I want to be very careful with this language here because we're going to use the word return in a very specific way later. So I don't want to use the word return here, even though in English that would be correct. Let's say control jumps. That's a little bit uh, more precise and avoids conflating language here. So forget everything I ever said about the word return here. We're going to see a very specific meaning of the word return uh, later on in the course. So what we're saying here is control is going to jump back to the conditional. Right? And the condition is just a test, right? We're testing, hey, is this expression going to be true or false? And if it's true, we go into the repeat block, right? And so I might even draw an arrow here uh, that, that says, okay, after this finishes, we go back up and we test this condition again, okay? So what we need to be careful of is progress needs to be made in the repeat block towards the condition becoming false, okay? So uh, to avoid an infinite loop, And I'm going to, let's use um, a scary color here. Not quite red, but the closest I have it in my palette, infinite loops are not things that we want to write. We want to avoid infinite loops. So how do we do this? Well, uh, something needs to change. Uh, we need to change something in the loop. such that the condition, let me get out of the way here, such that the condition uh, eventually becomes false. Right? So something's gotta change in this repeat block at some point that makes this condition false when we jump back up to it and test it again, right? So we saw this happening in the previous example where we were increasing our counter. And once that counter got large enough, the condition became false and the loop was completed. We jumped over the repeat block because the condition was false, right? If we don't change anything, we're gonna have an infinite loop, okay? So it's not just enough to change that counter variable, but we tend to want to be sure that progress is being made um, so iterative progress progress made toward goal. 
and sorry for this being very small and at the bottom here, all right? So what we're doing is we're iterating and we're trying to iterate closer and closer to the end goal of our loop, right? So uh, in other words, we could have subtracted one from our counter variable. And I, I might actually go do that. And, and let's take a look at what happens there. And sure, the program is going to run. And we're going to see that the inputs are changing. It's not like it's going to print the, the square of 0, 0, the square of 0, 0. Uh, it, we'll see you know, the square of negative 1, the square of negative 2, the square of negative 3. But we're not getting closer to that condition being false, which means that we, have in essence, have effectively an infinite loop because we're just going to keep uh, subtracting one from our numbers until uh, we run out of steam and, and reach the smallest number our, our computer can represent in a Python program, which I don't even know what that is because uh, that type of sort of trivia is something that you can look up uh, if you're needing to. But in our case, it's very rare that you would actually need to know that, uh, including this one. So let's try this out. Um, so if I were to subtract one here and run this program, largest count up to, but not including what? And I say, okay, maybe count up to one, but not including it. So we should only see the output of zero is zero. And notice that we've got, you know, the computer is very happily doing exactly what we told it to do, right? This is what we told it to do. We made one simple change. We changed that plus to a minus. And notice that our loop is not progressing towards our end goal, right? We're not getting closer and closer towards our maximum because our counter is getting smaller and smaller. It's moving further and further away from the maximum. So we have sort of an illogical loop here that's in essence, another form of an infinite loop. Yeah, we're changing that variable, but the way that you change that variable matters. And you wanna be moving closer to that loop becoming false or the, that loop's condition becoming false. And here we're moving further away from it. So this is another example of an infinite loop, one that meets the criteria of we're changing something, but it doesn't actually satisfy the criteria of at some point uh, this condition becoming false. Okay, so once again, this is infinite. The computer is very happy to continue. We're up to 250,000 times. It's computed the, the square of a, a negative number for us. And we get a sense of just how much work is being done here, uh, but it's ultimately pointless work. So I'm gonna kill that and continue on. Okay. So that's a little bit about the syntax of a while loop. Um, this indentation is important. And I want to show you one other common use of a while loop, which is iterating through some collection of things. In other words, um, we can move step by step by step, one by one by one, uh, through some collection of data. And currently, we have only one data type available to us that we know of, which we can use indexing on, meaning we can say, hey, give me the first element at index zero of this thing which with a string we know is the first character of a string at index zero. The character at index one would be the second character. So I'm gonna change this example a little bit. Um, and uh, actually let's make one more example here because I wanna give you some conventional notation on, on what we might name variables in an example of a while loop, okay? So in their lessons, I'm gonna set up a new file and I'm gonna write uh, uh, iterating uh, through a collection, dot pi, right? And so I've named this file iterating through a collection. And so uh, let's make an example of looping through all characters in a string, okay? So let's say we wanted to print on each on, on individual lines in our program, uh, our program's output, each of the characters individually that's, that the user gave us. Okay, so let's ask the user for a string. So um, uh, we'll put the user, user string is a str type and it's the input of give me a string, All right? So we ask the user for a string, they give us some string input and now we want to loop through all of the characters in it and print them one by one by one. How can we do that? And why might we wanna do that? Well, in this example, I just wanna give you a, a sense of the shape of this um, a type of, of, of an algorithm that's given some uh, ordered collection of values and you wanna work through each of them individually, right? This is a simple algorithm. 
And you could imagine, well, what if we wanted to write a little program that tested whether or not someone's password was valid based on some rules? And what if one of those rules was you only had letters and numbers? Well, before you could test whether you only had letters and numbers, you would first need to loop through each of the characters individually. And then inside of that loop, you would do some sort of test like, hey, is this a letter? No. Okay. Is it a number? No. Okay. Well, then we have an invalid password. But if it is a letter or a number, then okay, let's move to the next letter or character and test it. So previously in the last example, we used a variable named uh, counter. And here I'm going to use a variable named i. And I'm going to set up a, uh, a comment here, a code comment, to mark and indicate that um, the variable i is a um, uh, common counter variable name in programming. You can think of I as being short for iteration. Or iterator. Okay. And it's a counting variable. We start from zero, we count up to the maximum uh, index of what we're what, what we're testing. Okay. So we want to move through all characters in the string. So we might write a while loop like while i is less than, how do we know how many characters are in a string? Well, we've seen previously the length of a string can be calculated using the len uh, function in Python and user string. Okay? So there's our condition. And you're probably wondering, why are we starting from zero? Well, remember, if we think about a string, what we uh, know about a string's characters when we access them directly is that if we have a string like A, B, C, uh, and this is a string named S, right? So S index zero refers to A, S index one refers to B, and S index two refers to C, right? So notice that the indices are all integers. Right? And they're integers starting from zero. Well, what do you know? We've got i, that's our counter integer starting from zero. And just like with the counter variable in the previous example, we want to increase that by one each time we, uh, we move on. So I'm going to go ahead, and it's actually pretty good practice to go ahead and say i is assigned i plus one at the end of your repeat block to be sure that no matter what, you know you're making progress in the way that you expect. Okay. Uh, and now what do we want to do? Well, we want to print. And what do we want to print? Well, we want to print user string, the character at index i, right? And in a pretty straightforward way, what we're saying here is user string index i, i starts out at zero. We would print s index zero. That's going to be a. So we would see a line of output that's a. We increase i to be i plus one. We go back up, we test, is, is one less than the length of the string? The length of the string was three, right? So that's still true. And then we print length of user string, and then i is now one, so we print b. i is assigned i plus one, so we increase i to be two. Two less than three, that's still true. We print s index two, which we know is c. i is i plus one, so i is now three. Three less than three is false, and our program's done. So maybe we'll also print done here. Right. Notice that you don't have to print done. Uh, that's just something I'm adding here to indicate and illustrate that when we're done with the repeat block in a while loop, we need to unindent our code. On that front, while we're here, since we haven't talked about this, it's worth mentioning that in VS Code and in most program editors, if you use your mouse to select multiple lines and you press the tab button, you're going to notice that all of those lines get indented by one. right? This is very handy, but what if you need to unindent? Uh, well, if you hold down the shift button, so shift, and then press tab again, you can unindent multiple lines all at the same time. So you can select multiple lines, indent them by one, pressing the tab button or shift, tab, and you'll unindent. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's try running this program. And there we go. So python-m lessons.iterating through a collection. And in this case, a string, we can think of as a collection of characters. Let me give my output of the terminal a little bit more space here. 
And okay, give me a string. And the string that I give is ABC. And notice that we print on individual lines, ABC and then done. We could also give a string such as uh, the quick brown fox jumped over the fence, a much longer string than ABC. And notice that our program was happy to. Uh, there's my input and then take each of those characters one by one, space is included, every character, no matter what, print them out line by line. Right? What we could have done is we could have added in this repeat block, we could have a conditional here. Like I was mentioning, if we wanted to do something like test whether someone's valid uh, password choice is valid, we could have some conditional tests. Okay, if this character is a letter, then we're okay. If it's not a letter, then this is an invalid password. And we would need some extra variables to keep track of those things. Um, but that's the type of work that we can do in a while loop. This pattern here is very common where we set up a counter variable and you'll often see this variable named I in simple examples uh, for the iterator variable, what, what we're using to count the number of iterations. And we start by saying zero. We tend to not start counting from one uh, for reasons that are a little bit beyond our scope right now, but are related to what you already know about strings, that very first character you access it with index is zero, right? And then we'll test while i is less than, you know, the largest number or the length, the number of times we wanna uh, iterate. And because we start from zero, that's why we choose less than. We don't want it to be less than or equal to because if i is equal to the length of a string, we would get an error accessing some character that doesn't exist in that string. Uh, and then here we're just doing a little bit of work and we're recognizing that, okay, we can use that index or we can use that uh, counter variable in conjunction with the indexing operator to have a superpower. This little bit of code, these four lines, allow us to write an algorithm that operates character by character on every character in a string, no matter how long that string is, right? No matter how long it is, which is very valuable. We could have the entire corpus of Shakespeare's work all in this, these four lines, and our program would print each character out one by one by one individually. Of course, we wanna do more useful things than that, uh, but this is just an example of this technique in action. The last thing I wanna mention before closing this out is to remind you of the very important differences between an if statement and a while loop. So remember, if is a conditional statement and while is a loop statement. And there's a very, very, very important difference between these things that you need to remember. Right? So if this condition is true in an if statement, we go to the then block and then we can continue on in our code, right? We just move on, we move forward. So there's no loop in an if statement. It's always incorrect to say something like an if loop. There's, there's no such thing as an if loop, right? This is just an if statement, that's a conditional statement. And so we test something that allows us to conditionally choose whether or not to do what's in the then block. And you've seen in the previous video, we can also have an else block to choose to do something else if that condition is false. Alternatively, with the while loop, after the repeat block ends, repeat block, the last statement evaluates, and then after that last statement evaluates, something else happens. It's important to not confuse with the if statement, which we go back up to the top, and we test this condition again. Is this condition still true? And if so, we go back into the repeat block. We run through all of those statements, line by line by line, following the same rules we would. And when we reach the end of that repeat block, we go back and we test that condition. So don't confuse these two constructs. They're very different, even though they do share some properties in common, as you can kind of see here. All right, so that is a quick introduction to the fundamentals of looping in Python with the while statement. We'll learn there's some other kinds of loops later on, but the while loop is the most broadly useful and uh, most powerful. Uh, we'll learn some other ones that are sort of special cases of this, which can, in many instances, make our code a little bit easier to write and understand, um, but have more constraints associated with them. The while loop is very closely associated as we just saw with the if statement, but has very different semantics that give us this looping ability that allows us to jump back up to the condition and test it again and again and again. With while loops, you can write programs. With while loops and if statements combined, you can write algorithms that are extremely powerful and allow your computer to do a lot of work on your behalf.